somebody shout hallelujah. In this new year. And a lot had happened in this our nation. It is by the grace of God, the God who answers prayers, that Nigeria is not born in today. So I want us to lift our voices to the Almighty God and just bless His holy name. And say, Father, we just want to praise you. We want to give you glory. We want to give you honor. We want to give you adoration. We want to say thank you. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you. Thank you for answered prayers. Thank you for all you've done in the past three months. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Father, we are very, very grateful. We adore you. We magnify your holy name. We are very grateful. We are very grateful, Lord. Thank you so, so much for your mercy upon our nation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Glory be to your holiness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We are very, very grateful, Lord. Thank you, ancient of days. Be glorified forever, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. And then, there are some people in this nation that we don't, that we don't give enough credit to. The soldiers, the paramilitary, and the police. Today, I want you to lift up your voice to the Almighty God. You commit these great men and women into the hand of the Most High. And say, Father, these people have been taking care of us. Take care of them. Take care of their families. Let it be well with them. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and pray for these people. Pray for the military, pray for the paramilitary, pray for the police. Pray that the Almighty God will take care of them and watch over them. Take care of their families, take care of them when they go out, take care of them when they come in. Take care of them during the day. Take care of them during the night. Lord of hosts, please take care of these people. Help them. Support them. Defend them. Carry their own bodies, Lord. Fight their battles for them. Make them more than conquerors in every facet of their lives. Father, please take care of them. Take care of them. Take care of them. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. The God of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war, of mercy and
mighty man of war, the Lord of hosts, the one who has never lost a war, we worship you. Thank you for January. Thank you for February. Thank you for March. And Lord, thank you for April. Glory be to your holy name. The first quarter of this year is gone. By your grace, we are still here. And we know by your grace, we will be here even to the end of the year. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. And today we are committing your very special people, the military, the paramilitary, and the police into your hands. Please, Lord, even as they watch over us, watch over them. Take care of them. Take care of their families. Fight their battles for them. Make them more than conquerors. Support them. Strengthen them. Protect them. Promote them. Let it be well with them. Any time they cry unto you, particularly a time of danger, answer them by fire. And Lord God Almighty, all your children who have been faithful in the payment of their tithes and giving of their offerings, I pray that this month in particular, you will surprise them. Open mighty doors unto them. In a way that they will say, ah, is this not becoming too much, Father? Embarrass them with your blessings. And please, Lord, your mercy over Nigeria, let it continue. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Shekan with one or two people and said, you will continue to be a great survivor. And then you may please be seated. Today I've been asked to speak on to us on a very, very important topic. Vessels unto honor. It's a very serious topic, probably because of the caliber of people we have among us today. I will try my best to cover the topic, but I won't go too deep because it's a very serious topic indeed. Second Timothy chapter 2, from verse 20 to 21. Second Timothy chapter 2, from verse 20 to 21. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Vessels unto honor. Ah. In every house, you have just been. That's where you drop refuge, leftovers. You have brooms that you used to sweep the ground. And then you have cutleries. You 
have drinking glasses. You have vessels that never come near the master of the house. And then you have vessels that you can find on the dining table of the master. One is called Versus unto Honor, the other is Versus unto Dishonor. But they are all Versus. The big question this morning is what kind of Versus would you like to be? Uh, <laughs> the answer should be between you and God. And by the time I finish, you will probably want to think again. Let us look at the advantages of being a vessel unto honor. Before we talk about what it will cost you to be a vessel unto honor. Let's consider the advantages of the spoon, the fork, the drinking glass, on the dining table, shall we say, of the president. One of the advantages of being a restaurant to honor is that the master is constantly touching you. If, for example, you are the spoon on the, on the dining table of the Mosai, from time to time, he touches you. And when God touches you, you get strength that human beings cannot explain. 1 King chapter 18, verse 46. 1 King chapter 18, verse 46. The Bible says God laid his hand on Elijah and he outran the chariot of the king. Ran for six miles. That's very close to 10 kilometers. Faster than a chariot drawn by the best horses in the land. When God touches you, you suddenly get strength that nobody can explain. When He touches you, you get your strength renewed in a manner that will embarrass others. Some years ago, I took some of my children on what you would call a wild wind tour of South America. Today, we are in this country. We arrive in the morning. We will hold a crusade in the evening. We return home by 11 p.m. And then that's when we break our fast. And then we get to bed probably around 1. By 5 o'clock, I phone them, it is time for morning prayer, so that we can get on our way by 6 a.m. to beat the traffic, because we are going to another country, and uh, we are going to repeat the whole process. <laughs> One day, this might be, and now, younger than I by at least 20 years, decided that they will gang up against me. <laughs> they all took their phone off the hook, the phone in the bedroom. So when I woke up at five and I was phoning, all the phones were sounding engaged. We slept at one. You are waking us up at five. If you don't need sleep, we need sleep. I'm praying for somebody here today, God will lay his hand on you. Yeah! And that strength that nobody will be able to explain will become your portion. Yeah! If you're a vessel unto honor, God touches you constantly. The 
there's something even more. And that is when the president, maybe the vice president, uh, maybe the chief of defense staff, inspector general of police, maybe they, they, they sit down together to have uh, lunch. The cup is on the table. Everything they are discussing, the cup is here. When you are a vessel of the honor in the hand of the Almighty God, you hear what is going on in the heavens. If you are a vessel of the honor in the hand of the Almighty God, you hear conversations that other people don't hear. And some of these conversations you can't even share. For example, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 2 to 4, 2 Corinthians 12, from verse 2 to 4, it, 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 it talks about a man called Paul. He, he said, I know a man. Whether in the body, he said, I don't know. Whether out of body, I can't relate. But I know a man who was taken to the third heavens. And he had words that cannot be spoken. When you become a vessel unto honor in the hands of God, you hear things. You don't belong to the class of those who call themselves prophets, who prophesy all kinds of jokes. <laughs> Thus said the Lord, it is going to rain in June. Ah. June is the rainy season. You don't need to prophesy that. <laughs> one, one prophet in Nigeria was prophesying some time ago. Three nations were going to compete for soccer. He said, Thus said the Lord, if Nigeria would do this and do this, they will win. I laugh. When God is going to tell you the winner, He will tell you the winner. Period. No guesswork. But when you are a vessel unto honor, the Almighty God will tell you things that many a times you find it difficult to repeat. When coronavirus was coming, the Lord just said, the whole world is going to be on holidays. And I think I told, told you that. How can the whole world be on holidays? What will be happening on holidays? What will be happening? What, will, what, what is it that we will say we are celebrating? Until the lockdown came. And you find the streets of London empty streets of New York, empty, etc., etc. Et now, uh, uh, I, I am not a prophet, I'm, but by God's grace, I'm a vessel of honor. And I just want to tell someone in particular, listen to me now, the Lord saith the Lord, your joy is about to begin. <laughs> when you are a vessel of honor, because you are at the dining table of the Most High, constantly He breathes on you. Because He's breathing, and you are present, and part of His breath will be coming on you. In, in John chapter 20, from verse 21 to 23, John 20, from verse 21 to 23, the, the, the Bible tells us that when Jesus Christ came into the room where the apostles were gathered, he breathed on them and said, Receive you the Holy Spirit. When God breathed on you, things happen. It's like as if the Holy Spirit comes upon you suddenly. And if 
true ones are an example of what could happen as a result of that. You can find it in Judges chapter 15, verses 14 and 15. Judges 15, verses 14 and 15. The Bible says, the enemy saw Samson bam, and then he began to rejoice. And suddenly, the Spirit of God came on Samson, and all his yokes were burnt as if by fire. And then he got up, grabbed the jawbone of an ass, and he killed a thousand men. I have good news for someone here today. Someone is going to become a best friend to honor. God will breathe on you. And all the yokes binding your hands so that you have not been succeeding the way you should succeed, binding your legs so that you have not been making the progress you should be making, all these yokes will be born today. <laughs> but there is something even deeper still. As a matter of fact, I have just mentioned it, I won't be able to discuss it deeper because this is Sunday service, not the solemn assembly. And that is that if you invest more to honor, from time to time, God kisses you. You say, no, 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 that, that cannot be possible. Oh. <laughs> In Numbers chapter 12, from verse 5 to 8, Numbers 12, from verse 5 to 8, the Almighty God said, if I want to talk to a prophet, I may show him a dream. I may give him a, a vision. He said, but Moses is different. I talk to him mouth to mouth. I, I thought God would have said, I talk to him mouth to ear. You know, when you want to whisper to somebody and you don't want anybody else to hear, you put your mouth near the air and whisper to God said, no. I can begin to tell you what happens when you get a kiss from God. I will leave that to the Holy Spirit to manifest it in the life of someone. To manifest it in the life of someone. I will pray that someone will get a kiss from the Almighty today. And then you come and tell us <laughs> the result. But I can tell you at least this much. If you have ever received a kiss from the Most High God, from that moment on, you rule by decrees. Everything you say comes to pass. I, I, I will just remind you very quickly of a story. You know the story very well. You know the story of one of my sons who came and said, I want a big post uh, I've applied and I want you to speak a word so that uh, the interview will go well. I was going to pray, he said, no, 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 don't pray, just speak a word. Okay, I spoke a word. The interview will go well. He went, he prepared very hard, got to the place of interview, he went to the boardroom. When he got there, they asked him three questions. What's your name? He told them. What post do you say you want? He told them. They asked him the third question, when can you start? So he came, rejoicing. Daddy, I got the job. Ah, I said, congratulations. He said, no, 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 speak another word. I said, all right. I pray that your progress in that place will be rapid. Amen. 
The following day he came, trembling. What happened? I reported for work, and they sent me to the boardroom. I met the same people that were there the other day. They said, young man, after you left, our managing director resigned. The position he got was assistant managing director. Now, are you ready for the post of managing director? Ah, so he came back the following day, trembling. I said, congratulations. So he said, speak another word. So I said, all right, the God who started the good work in you will complete it. He said, amen. Go to the place of work the following day. They asked him to go to the boardroom. He met the same people there, and the people said, Young man, we have discovered why our managing director resigned. It's because they have given him a higher pay somewhere else. Now we don't want you to leave, so we double your salary. And then he came back again and said, Daddy, speak another word. I said, ah. <laughs> you want to take the company from the owner? I want to speak a word to somebody today. Everything that you desire from God, you get it today. When you get a kiss from God, whatever you speak is done. Now, like I said, I, I don't want to go too deep in some of this area. You can't have all these benefits without requirements. In the text we read, it, it talks about vessels unto honor, gold, silver, or like wood and mud. Anyone who is going to be a vessel unto honor in the hands of God must be tough. He must be someone who can endure. I'm sure that's why they chose this special day when we are having the military and the police with us. <laughs> In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3, the Bible talks about enduring hardness as a good soldier of Christ. I wanted to be a soldier. It's my mother who didn't allow me. And I told her that I wanted to join the army after I graduated, she, she said to me, you are my only son. I'm not asking you not to join the army. Just wait till I die and you have buried me, then you can do whatever you want. <laughs> that was in the 1960s. By the time he died in 1990, it was already too late for me to join the army, but I love the army. Uh, maybe another time I will tell you the reasons why. <laughs> because I love the army. I watch every film, every, every cinema, anything that had to do with the military. And I'm telling you, I saw what changed the civilian? And they have a name for those of us who are civilians. To the Iron Man. You see them in beautiful dresses. They look nice. Huh? <laughs> Maybe you should check what goes on from the day they enlist to the day they begin to march in ceremonial dress. You will know what is called hardness. You will know what is called endurance. If somebody says something along that line in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 24 to 27. 1 Corinthians 9 from verse 24 to 27. Paul spoke about how if you want to be a winner, you must endure rigorous self-discipline. 
Like in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 23 to 24, 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to 24, one of the things he mentioned is fasting often. You want to be a vessel unto honor in the hand of God? <laughs> you will love fasting more than you love food. And then, because of time, there are certain things every vessel unto honor has in common with another. Something that you will find is present in every soldier, every paramilitary officer, every police officer. They have certain things in common. Number one, instant obedience. I thought somebody would say amen to that. <laughs> because it is true. And Jesus Christ made it clear. You want to be a vessel unto honor? Fine. John 15 verse 14. John 15 verse 14. You are my friends if you do whatsoever. I command you. Whatsoever. A vessel unto honor obeys first. If he has any complaint, he can complain later. That is if the complaint is allowed. Those of you who are civilians, <laughs> I'm a civilian, but I'm more on the military side. Do you know that when your senior officer gives you a command, and you feel you should put in a word, you have to get permission? You have to say, permission to speak, sir. And if the officer said permission denied, that's the end of the story. I, I thought the soldiers around would say amen to that. <laughs> I believe I'm speaking the truth. You obey, that is the thing. And if there is anything that is lacking in the life of many Christians, why they are not vessels unto honor, is because they just don't learn how to obey. For example, the Lord gave us a command at the beginning of the year. He, he said his church must double every three, three months. It's not an advice, it's a command. And that command now, I want to put it in a more pleasant way for you. Every one of us, members of the Redeemed Christian Church of God in particular, from this moment onward, every month you must win a soul. Amen. It's an order. It's not an advice. It's not an appeal. It's an order from our commander in chief. And you want to be a vessel unto honor? The first thing that must be driven into that your little head is obedience. And when God says, do, you do. Don't, you don't. Why? Because God knows the future more than you do. He knows what is best for you. And at times God will give you a command that will sound completely unreasonable. But don't forget, He's the all-knowing God. When I was preparing this little summer, I remembered an occasion that the story I've told you some of you before. I went home on holidays. I went to my village. And when I got to the village, in my own house, they prepared pandediam for me. <laughs> and you know, you know me and pandediam. And they prepared pandediam very good combination of cross soup with bushmeat. Oh God. And I was not fasting. 
So I prayed, Lord, bless this food that and I had from God. Son, don't eat. I know his voice, so I can't pretend that I didn't know who was speaking. But I pretended. What could be wrong? This food is prepared in my home by my people. My best meal. <laughs> I'm on holidays, man. I'm not fasting. You know, God doesn't repeat himself when he's dealing with verse 1 to 100. Son, don't eat. And he kept quiet. I ate. <laughs> I'm sure you are thinking maybe they poison the food. No. As soon as I finished preach, eating, a messenger came from my elder sister. You are wanted urgently. Your elder sister is dying. We had you in town. Come. I followed them. I got to my elder sister and I saw him covered from head to toe with smallpox. I'm talking of several years ago. Ooh, you don't face smallpox with a belly full of pandemic. Yeah? I ran to the back of the house, put my hand into my throat, and vomited the food. And then I come, okay, can now come back and face the devil. And while all that one was going on, God said, I warned you. Is there anybody here today who said, from now I will be God? Uh, raise your hand and let him see. Yeah, from now, Lord, I will be you. Instant obedience. Second thing that is common to all the military, paramilitary, police is submission to authority. Total surrender to authority. Huh. I don't want to go into all the details of what goes on in the military. But I'm sure some of us have a rough idea that if they ask you to march forward and you decide to march backwards, uh, you might not even live to tell the story. God expects every vessel unto honor in his hands to be hundred percent surrendered to him. Why? Jeremiah chapter 18 from verse 1 to 6. Jeremiah 18 from verse 1 to 6. God is the potter. You are the clay. He can make whatever he likes out of you. If you surrender to him, he will make a vessel unto honor out of you. You don't surrender, he will make another vessel. Years ago, I preached a sermon called Seeing the Invisible. It would be a good idea if you can get the tape. And I gave an illustration. And I hope somebody is listening to me today. I told you this is a very serious topic. That's why you haven't been shouting and clapping. I said, a sculptor would look at a log of wood. We all see a log of wood. But a sculptor can see a lion inside that log of wood. So he takes his chisel and hammer and began to cut. 
a little wood away from here, a little floor away from here. And very soon, you see the head of a lion appearing. You say, ah, so this was in the wood. And then it keeps going. And then occasionally, it will strike a piece of the wood. And the wood will split into two because there is a fault in the wood. And you will look at, oh, this wood, I say, what's wrong with you? Eh? I want to make you a lion. Now you've broken into two. Okay, if you can be a lion, you can still be a cat. And then he keeps going to walk again, trying to make a cat out of what would have been a lion. And then another stroke, and it is split into two again. Ah, what's wrong with you, this wood? Well, if you can be a cat, maybe we can make a rat out of you. And he keeps walking and walking, and then it is split into two again. He will say, all right, if you don't want to be a lion, you don't want to be a cat. You can't be a rat. Then you can be firewood. I think it sounds like a proverb, but I hope somebody understands. If you are not 100% surrendered to God, if God says, this is the way I want you to go, and you say, I want to go my own way, you might end up where you don't want to be. Let me conclude. Do you want to be a vessel unto honor? Matthew chapter 11, from verse 28 to 30. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Jesus Christ said, Come unto me. I will take away all the burdens you are carrying. But he said immediately, you must take my yoke upon you. When the evangelist wants to talk to you because he wants to talk sweet so that you, you could give your life to Jesus Christ, he say, come to Jesus from now on, everything will be hunky-dory. God bless the evangelist. When you come to Jesus Christ, you are coming under a new master. When you are in the world, living with the devil, you can do what you like. You can be drunk. You can keep late night. You can, you can do whatever you like. The devil doesn't care because he has got you. And when he wants to use you, he will use you. When you come to Jesus Christ, a life of discipline begins. You want to be a vessel unto honor? 100% surrender. You can surrender completely, no problem. Jesus Christ is not compelling anybody to come. He, he will say, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If you want to open the door, I will come in. If you don't, then up to you. But if you surrender to Jesus Christ, the moment you invite him to come into your life, he takes over. A friend of mine, when I asked him to give his life to Jesus Christ, he said, ah, thank you. Wait till I am old. I want to enjoy myself first. Because the moment I surrender, I know that there are rules and regulations. Well, fortunately, he didn't surrender, and he never became old. You used to be a vessel unto honor. God was using you. You knew it. You were hearing his voices. You were feeling his breath upon you from time to time. He was touching you, and then you messed up. 
if the master is eating and all of a sudden an accident happens and the fork drops to the ground for that fork to come back to the master's table it will have to undergo serious cleaning you are a backslider you want to come back and become a vessel unto honor again god will cleanse you but it is by fire malachi chapter 3 verse 2 that is why those of us who by the grace of god are vessels unto honor in his hand that's why we are afraid of backsliding in the army of the almighty god there's no room for nothingness there's no room for any kind of sloppiness you have to be sharp all the time you are a vessel unto honor and you want to remain a vessel unto honor all the time second timothy chapter 4 verse 2 Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 2 says <laughs> you have to be instant in season and out of season. They say it in another way. They say the price of safety is on resting vigilance. You want to be a vessel of honor? All the days of your life you must understand the Bible says you pray without season. You must be on your toes 24-7. Ask the military. Ask the policeman. And they will tell you, wherever you are posted to, you are there at the moment at the pleasure of your commander <laughs> like one of my friends told me when they say you are transferred to some place you don't you, you don't unpack all your loads because you could be asked to be here today and be somewhere by tomorrow signal comes from above instantly you're on the move that's the way it should be for the vessels unto honor. So I thank God all my brothers and sisters, the military, the paramilitary, the police who are here, you are a very good example of vessels unto honor and you will remain vessels unto honor forever. Yeah. And I want to tell you one thing, if nobody is praying for you, I am. Because I appreciate your value. Because I know what you stand for. It is my prayer you will remain vessels unto honor forever. Yes. As for those of us who are civilians, that we want to join the army of the Lord. We want to be vessels unto honor in the hand of the Most High God. You have not given your life to Jesus Christ before, you want to do so today, I have told you the truth. You come to him, all things must become new. You can't live any kind of life you want anymore. The moment you give your life to him, he will take over. That one thing is certain. If you are a vessel unto honor in his hands, he will protect you. The protection that the king or the president will give to his special, his favorite cup, favorite cutlery, etc., etc., et is not the same thing that he will give to the dustbin. And let me tell you, brethren, there are great days ahead only for the vessels unto honor. So if there's anyone here this morning and you've heard me, uh, you said this may be, may be a bit tough, but uh, it is the truth. And the Bible says you shall hear the truth and the truth shall make you free. If you have heard the truth now and you want
want to stop playing church. You want to surrender your life absolutely to the commander-in-chief of all the hosts of heaven and earth. And you want to be a vessel of honor, honor in his hand. Come now. It might be one or two. The Lord is calling you. He will take you. He will wash you in his blood. And the journey to becoming a vessel unto honor will begin. I believe only few will come this morning. It will be few that really mean business. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, come now. I'm counting. One. If you want to give your life to Jesus. Oh, God bless you. Can you brother. stand up where you are? I know those who Whether are you are seated outside, it will be those who will come. All the auditorium. Can you God. come now? You want to give your life to Christ? Can we put our hands together for Jesus? There is no life like the life of the vessel of the one. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to become a vessel unto honor. Can you come now? If I even kiss you, and he will protect you. He will protect you. I can guarantee that. You want to surrender to him, stand up wherever you are. Three. You want to become a vessel unto honor? Please come now. Please come now. Please come now. Can we put our hands together? Can we put our hands together? The Bible says there is rejoicing in heaven over a single soul that is saved. This is a moment of decision. Real, solid decision. This is no joking matter today. You want to be a vessel unto honor? It is time for you to come. Let all your opportunity are still coming because I want to pray now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you are coming, come now. Yes, all your ladies are serious people. They know what they are deciding for, they know where they are going. The Almighty God is going to receive you today. Hurry up if you are coming. Thank you, Father. We are coming, come now. Just make sure you get here before I finish praying because I'm about to pray now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, keep coming, keep coming. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Father. Okay. Amen. Amen. Now, those of us who have come forward, let's talk to the Almighty God. Lord, I'm serious now. I'm surrendering 100% to you. I will do your will from now. Just save my soul. Wash me clean. And I will serve you all the days of my life. And the rest of us, please stretch your hands towards these precious people. And it's a seed for them. Let's try for to our to us, our brother. Who save your soul. Who save your own souls also. Pray that the Almighty God will receive them and wash them clean so they can become vessels of honor in His hands. Let's intercede for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. And if anybody else is still coming, then you have to hurry up now because I must pray in the next 30 seconds. Thank you, my Father. Glory be to God. Oh, thank you, Savior. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Savior. Yes, it's not too late yet. God bless you. God bless you. You are welcome. God bless you. Just pray the same prayer. Lord, I made this next. No more joking. I surrender my life completely to you. Save my soul, Lord. Watch me clean. I want to be a vessel of Johanna all the rest of the days of my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And Father, my God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. And thank you for these people who have decided that they want to surrender their life to you. Father, please receive them. Save their souls. Wash them clean in your blood. And Lord, run their names in the book of life. Amen. Let them become mighty vessels of the honor you went. Amen. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, that from now on, any time they call on you, 
shake hands with all of you today. That, that, that will tell you that God has taken note of you. So you stay where you are. Uh, later on, the counselors will collect the information I want from you. And uh, <laughs> why, why is that fellow now running forward? Okay. Now, so I, I, I will come to you. Just, just uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just allow them. The rest of us, are we ready to pray? You, do, you have not even answered like soldiers. Are you ready to pray? Now stand on your feet. Like a soldier. A real military hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God. I said, Father. I will be a best friend to honor. All the days of my life. Father, use me for your glory. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Talk to the Almighty God. Ahead, talk to the Almighty God that the Lord will make you a vessel unto honor. Tell God you want to be a vessel unto honor that you may receive constant touch, that you may hear constantly. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Masutanda le brande kasuntali. Zale brande kete gashinta le brande kasuntali. Zale brande kasunta. Lift up your voice to him and talk to him. Tell him you want to be a vessel unto honor all the days of your life. To be a vessel unto honor is to be at his service. Tell God you want to serve him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Oh, Maripa Takas and Talia. Verse 1 to honor are not ordinary. Ask God to turn you to extraordinary person. Go ahead, talk to him. Masuka la brende kasan talimama. Gara Baba, ask him to breathe upon you. That now you want to be a vessel unto honor. Ask the Lord to breathe upon you. Ask him to breathe upon you this day. Masu Talia. The breath of the Most High God. The breath of the Most High God. Mama kapa shika to lebrande kasun tali. Mara bato kase kete ndele boto gajen tali baba. Su brande kete gazun tali baba kashen teli ande. Roko poto zipan tali brande kasan tali mama. Rako kapa lama to gajen tele bronto gazin telele. Rakoto Bajinta Le Brande Kasantali. Are you praying at all? Are you praying at all? Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. That all the days of your life you'll be a verse one to honor is the same. Verse one to honor are useful vessels. Verse one to honor are reusable vessels. Verse one to honor are not vessels that you use and you trash. They are always reusable. Talk to the Almighty God that God will use you. God will use you again and again. Again and again. Again and again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Marebo to gazi katon de libra kata. Shentele brande kasantali. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. I thought someone would say a louder amen. amen. You will take one more prayer as you lift up your two hands to him and say, Father. Father. You know, 
Daddy did not go to that extent. Vessels unto honor are vessels of mercy. They are vessels of what? Mercy. They enjoy mercy. I want you to lift up your two hands and say, Father, Father. as you make me vessel unto honor, let me enjoy your mercy all the days of my life this second quarter of the year carry me by your mercy can you go ahead and talk to him oh my santa baba santa la baka tagazantale vessels unto honor are vessels of mercy you will never be vessel of destruction all the days of your life you'll be vessel of mercy masuka labate gashentalia and that the mercy of god carry you you and your entire household sakale brande kaston talima shentelele kakabo shente di lepran de gazinda thank you mighty father in jesus mighty name we are praying and so our dear lord we want to say thank you thank you for making us a vessel unto honor we will never all the days of our life be vessel unto dishonor in the mighty name of jesus as vessels unto honor lord make us also vessels of mercy but as we begin this second quarter more than ever before you will show us mercy you will carry us by your mercy Amen. and by your mercy we will never be vessels unto destruction amen. if my father can hear your loud amen you will never be a vessel unto destruction amen. all the days of your life you will be vessels unto honor amen. in the mighty name of jesus amen. vessels unto honor are not ordinary I decree from this day onward, may you enjoy extraordinary grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. I told the Lord God say it better and a louder amen. amen. Stand those signs together for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and go ahead and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And before you sit down, announce your new status to your neighbor and say, I am now a vessel unto honor. Please don't be jealous. But now you can have your seat. <laughs> hallelujah. I say, Hallelujah. I can see a husband telling the wife not to be jealous. <laughs> Let somebody shout, Hallelujah. I say you are writing but if you are not writing rise on your feet and the account details are being projected on the screen engineers in case you don't have your what do you call it in case you don't have cash you can do transfer and you can also use your ATM card for the POS the POS machines are all over just beckon on the ushers and they will attend to you over to you choir even when I fall your hand, you still the woman. Love her up my soul, you know that break my heart. I sing about your mercy, I sing about your grace. When you don't lose my brain, every night I make you say, Daddy, let it pass. I'm here to bless you.
Ruese, 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 Bamba, Bamba, Ruese. Everybody, come on, let me shake your body to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Ooh! 
to become tongues, they are insufficient to praise you. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness through which we reign in life with Christ. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. We are not bedridden. We are not under the bridge. We are not in jail. We are not starving. You have been so good to us. Worse, we fail us to praise you. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Even the blessing we never expected that you brought our way. None of us can sponsor you, Lord. We are too small to sponsor you. What we have just done is to show our gratitude. Make them acceptable in your sight in the name of Jesus Christ. You have blessed us so much for which we are dancing. Next month, our dance will be more. Henceforth, our dance will be more. Because your word says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter until the perfect day. Our tomorrow will be more glorious than today in the name of Jesus Christ. As you keep blessing us, we will keep showing you gratitude in the name of Jesus. Any power that was against our gratitude, we pull it down in the name of Jesus. We trust you that Nigeria will be good. 
there will be no curfew. Amen. We will not be locked up at home. Amen. We will always have the liberty to come and praise you. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. And any sickness that followed us to this service perishes now in the name of Jesus Christ. Go and prosper. I said go and prosper. So shall it be. At home we will be praising you. On our jobs we will be praising you. We will be addicted to praising you. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah.